okay, the pan is dropped, but I just want to update you guys. I'm really proud of myself. I haven't spilled a single drop. Welcome back to Living With That Classic, and we have the XJS V12 convertible up in the air, and that's because there is a slight transmission issue. It's not really an issue, but if you remember a couple years ago, I serviced the transmission and made a video of that, dropping the pan and everything, and the transmission mount, and everything that's involved with that. However, after that, we haven't really used it that much. You know, the pandemic happened, some other things, but, Whenever it's sat for a while and you start it up, there will be a whirring sound from the transmission. Uh, I tried to film it the last time I started up, it didn't really make the noise, but the, here's that little clip. So you heard that tiny little bit of noise, but sometimes it's a little bit worse and it takes a while for it to go away. And I've checked on various forums um, about this transmission, and I think it was on a Chevelle forum or something, because I mean, it's a GM transmission. And someone said they had the same issue, and it was the O-ring from the pickup tube. So there is a plastic pickup tube that goes up into the valve body and then into the filter. And that O-ring up there, if you pinch that or something when I serviced it, maybe, and it's drawing air there until, you know, all the fluids pump around. So it is actually time to drop the some of the fluid again because what I like to do is service the transmission with everything, drive the car for a bit, then replace some of the fluid. I usually just use a vacuum um, extractor to get that out, not have to drop the pan again. But because of this, we're going to drop the pan as well and have a look at that. But let me show you what it looks like underneath. I'm not going to do everything in detail because I already have a detailed video on this. I'll try and link it down below so you can have a look at that. But uh, let's see if we can solve the weird little noise. I have already drained the transmission or used a vacuum extractor like this one and just went through the dipstick to get most of it out just to not make such a big mess. There isn't a drain plug on this transmission pan and there is a transmission mount in the way to sort of get it off easily. So I'm going to show you what that looks like in case you didn't see the previous video. I'm going to go underneath here. And you see there is a transmission and there is the mount and that mount goes through two of the rear bolts on the pan so that needs to go away is spring loaded i've already made a video on how to do that so if you haven't uh, seen that i recommend you check it out because it is a little bit involved getting that off and is a big powerful spring otherwise this car is so nice underneath i fixed the tiny little leaks it had Remember, it has a small power steering leak that was fixed years ago. You see, it's just very nice. It's perfectly, perfectly dry underneath. So I am going to remove that mount, drop the pan, and then we'll have a look at that little O-ring when all that is out. So when you guys are back, the pan will be off, and we can have a look at that. Okay, the pan is dropped, but I just wanted to update you guys. I'm really proud of myself. I haven't spilled a single drop. Even though, I mean, I got most of the fluid out before, still probably, I don't know, half a liter, something left in there, and not a drop on the ground. Really proud of that. I'm going to wait for this dripping to stop, remove the filter, remove the pickup pipe, and uh, let's see what that O-ring looks like. Got the pan down, I just wiped it out with the paper towels. It's nice and clean inside. There wasn't really any debris, but it is completely normal to see a tiny bit of clutch material down there. It's just um, as long as it's not fake sludge. But, you know, that's what happens in automatic transmissions. The clutches do slip. That's sort of, you know, nature of it when you shift and things like that. So if you see a tiny bit in there, don't get too scared. This was the culprit. I at least think so. That little O-ring there. So this side sits up into the valve body. And then if we have... Well, it's a plastic case. But here is a new filter. So the filter lays in the pan. I don't really know which way, but let's say it's this way. And then that goes up there. So it sucks in the fluid through there, goes through the filter and up through there. So the old O-ring up there was, uh, I think was faulty. So I found a new one. I couldn't get a hold of anywhere I could get this one, but I have a kit with a bunch of different O-rings which are meant to um, withstand oil and high temperatures. 
So this one seems to be pretty much exactly like the other one. And uh, hopefully that's going to be tight again. So I'm going to put this all back in the car with a new cork gasket, of course. I use Highlander Blue on the cork gaskets as well. And it works well. I've never had a transmission leak again. So um, yeah, I'm going to do that. Put all of this back and I wonder if that little thing was the only thing causing the noise or if I just didn't have this in all the way or something but from now on I'm replacing these o-rings when I have these apart. So everything's back together, transmission pan is on, mount, the exhaust, I've even filled up with fluid and managed to have dinner in between all of that. So I measured what came out and it was about five and a half liters, a little bit over that, but I'm not sure if I got that thing completely empty. And when I took the filter out, I grabbed the old pan and there was a little bit left in that from an old filter. So um, I've put in five so far, which should be good enough to get this thing going. And really what I want to do is start it up now, run a little bit through the gears um, and check the level on the cold, get it to max on cold. And then we're going to let it sit overnight and then see if tomorrow it makes that funny noise when it starts up from cold or if we fixed it. But let's try and start it up. I'm going to try and just reach in because otherwise we have the door buzzer. And there's, there we go. And we're up and running. This thing just fires up straight away. Have a look underneath, make sure that we don't have I am just going to work it through the gears now a little bit. Nothing. Before when it was cold, it would make a little bit of noise in reverse. Alright, let me just go through them all. Alright, should have pumped fluid through all of it at the moment. Let's just go out and see what the level is. Okay, I've wiped off it and we're going to check here on the cold side. And we are on the minimum. I believe it is somewhere between about half a liter between minimum and maximum. So let's add about half a liter and see what it looks like then. It's really hard to tell but we're just above the maximum on the cold and we're starting to get close to the minimum on the hot side. I mean I left the engine idling the whole time so plus it's always hard to check the fluid level. You know some of the fluid will be standing up there in the pipe a bit but maximum on cold and yeah that side is where the fluid's gone down but I think I'm pretty happy with that now it feels really nice and distinct when going into gear no noise at all we'll shut it off we'll like cool down overnight and just see tomorrow if it starts up I mean we don't have the perfect level you gotta go for a long drive check all of that but this is we're pretty much in the ballpark so if we can restart it tomorrow and the noise is gone I'd call it a success all right, it's the next morning. Everything's cooled down. I've looked underneath, there are no drips or anything. The only thing I've done now is blip the ignition once and I have it in the accessory mode, just letting that pump run for the brakes. Once they're pumped up, we'll start the engine so we can see if we hear that whine or not, because that whine is very similar to uh, the weird transmission noise I had before. But let's see if it fires up. Got 
got absolutely no sound from the transmission. And we got reverse right away. We got drive. So I definitely think we we'll fixed issue. And that's a big success. It was a little bit of a gamble. Reading on the forum, um, can't remember once again if it was Chevelle or Corvette. It was something like that, but it was just on this transmission, the TH400 GM transmission, and someone had that weird whirring sound after they did a filter service, just like I did. And it said it was that little O-ring up there that either got pinched or something happened. And it looked fine when I took it out, but I found one of the same size, put it back in, and now we're good. So that is one other thing fixed on this car. I think the only other thing I need to do before this thing's road trip ready, besides just a light polish on the wax, is the windshield washer pump doesn't work. I have a new one on order. Should be here at the end of the week. And it's uh, in the inner wing inside the tank. Should be a pretty straightforward swap. But otherwise, this thing is ready to go for some summer adventures. Anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, Please do subscribe to the channel, it really does help out a lot. Until next time, I'm Adam, this was Lumifa Classic. I'll see you soon.